school. A slightly somber note, as we all know, to sort of begin proceedings, but we've just seen the most fantastic entrance. Sedba School charging through amongst all of their various school colleagues and friends and supporters. It was absolutely fantastic. I'm a little out of breath because I've been running back and forth trying to, step, trying to get myself on the camera. But it's an absolutely sensational atmosphere. We're about to kick off in about 10 minutes or so against Whitgift. And I'm joined by Simon Mulholland, Director of Rugby here at Sedba. What a fantastic entrance. Yeah, oh, look, just brilliant. We, we're known for our support. And um, look, this is a big day for us. First, first day of the season against great opposition in the school's championship. And four great teams here. Um, and look, we're really lucky with our support. They get behind us and it, and it means a lot to us. And just a, sort of before we get into today's rugby, a word on the school's championship. A really fantastic innovation, and, and I think we're going to see some great stuff over the whole year. Yeah, what an initiative. You know, like four great teams here, a super Sunday in an effect, and, and showcasing what we believe in as, as schools as such a great product and great running rugby. And look, this is the grassroots level, and it's at its best, I think. Um, there's some amazing players around here, great teams, great coaches, and you see what it means to them. And to matters on the field then for the boys in brown, they must be absolutely pumped. First proper game of the season, they are going to be absolutely ready for it. Yeah, they're excited. Look, we, we love playing on bus. It means a lot to us. And, um, you know, for a lot of the guys, it's their first time running out. And look, yeah, I, I think we're ready. I think um, it's easy to, to get overexcited on days like this. So, look, we've got a plan and, and hopefully we can stick to that and just be a bit patient because we, we've got really quality opposition and Whitgift against us. And is that a part of your role, I suppose, is managing that sort of excitement level? Because, you know, I, whenever I come here, I go for a little lap around the pavilion and take in all the names and the jerseys and things. I get excited and I'm not even playing. That must be a key part of your role on days like these. Yeah, it is. I mean, look, we, we're big believers in like, how can we move forward if we don't know what's happened in the past here as a football club and school. And we do a lot of work on our history and tradition. And, um, yeah, look, we've got to keep a lid on it because they're young men and they do get excited. But, um, yeah, look, hey, it's great to see them play with smiles on their faces. And that's the main thing, isn't it? Massively so. Well, look, I'm not going to keep you for too much longer because you've you've got some actual you've got your real job to do. But uh, just a, a final thought then on on how great it is to have everyone here. I know it's a bit of a, a sort of an unusual set of circumstances, but sport brings everyone together, and we I think we're about to see that in the in the most fantastic way. Yeah, I agree. It, it, it's an amazing day to celebrate, um, and, and obviously you know it is a tough period, and, and we're very oh, always everything in our in our thoughts here as rugby players. And um, yeah, look, what a way to celebrate. Absolutely fantastic. Well, listen, you go away and, uh, and do what you need to do. We're looking forward to the rest of the day and what a rest of the day it's going to be. We're going to have a fantastic 70 minutes or so of rugby here on Busk One and it is absolutely beating down in sunshine here. Let me tell you, it's not every time that you come to, <laughs> that you come to Sebra and you get a nice dry day. Very, very unusual, but it is looking fantastic. The referees are starting to make their way out. We're going to make our way off the pitch in just a second because we're going to have a moment silence, of course, as we've seen across the sporting arenas so far this weekend. So we'll leave you for just a second while I go up to my commentary position and we get ready for what is going to be a very special moment for that moment silence and then listen to the roar that comes afterwards. It is going to be like nothing else you see in English schools rugby. The start of the school's championship is upon us and it is going to be very, very special. Kickoff coming shortly.
And we're going to see the two teams join together for this moment. Silence mixed up on both sides of the field in a moment of togetherness and remembrance of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. So, the two sides now seconds away from kickoff in this first ever game in the school's championship. Sedbra in the brown on the left hand side of our screens, Whitgift in the blue on the right hand side, impeccably observed. Moment of silence there. But we are about to hear an explosion of noise. Whitgift go first with the noise. But let me tell you, the noise that this Sebba crowd brings is going to be big as well. There are drums ready to beat alongside me. Sebba big bring in the big squeeze. The drums go off. We are ready to go here on Buscombe. One of the most storied grounds in all of schoolboy rugby. Post to the first ever game in the school's championship and Sedba kick us off. And the ball spilled by Whitgift, so Sedba will get onto the attack nice and early. around the outside they look to go early on taken in and will wooden the vice captain feed the back line Charging in goes Ollie Glover for Sedba. The crowd loved that one. In now goes Archie Ivans. Wooten beats the back line. Back again to Glover. I think we can expect a lot of big carrying from Ollie Glover. Now to Finn Baker, another England under 18 man. Wooten. Oh, back inside, brilliantly disguised. My eyes went the other way for sure. Wooten into the hands of Alec Martin. Martin finds Baker. Baker finds Ben Redshaw, the skipper. Played at 13, bring the under 18 this summer, but playing 12 today. Wickiff went for the interception and just knocked it forward. And 
we'll have a scrum down and that gives me just a second to run through the teams for you said the school up front johnny hansen archie ivans and kata ando in the second row tommy triggs and finn baker the vice captain harry gresswell ollie glover and kane james in the back row half backs will wooden and alex martin wilbur backburn and luke parry on the wings in the midfield ben redshaw the skipper as mentioned alongside jack randall at outside center and tom burton at fullback on the bench for said but tom roebuck jack butterill charlie turnbull josh marlowe and josh harbour whitgift meanwhile jamie miller eight, ben eight, abraham eight, sebastian eight, rubio prida in the front eight, row nine. jocelyn heaver the captain and samuel oh, gower smith in the second row will von daddleson max hammond and noah berger the in the back row as the ball gets to the said back row Ball just spilled, which gives me a chance to just give you the back line for Whitgift. Matthew Roberts at scrum half. Ethan Fitzgerald, the vice captain, at fly half in the centres. Labi Bickbal and Connor Budd. And in the back three, Luca Holland, Cass Harris and Ben Townrow. On the bench for Whitgift, Harry Flint, Gabriel Akamir, Fraser Murray, Sam Lyon and Tyler Stewart-Pasley. Adam Robson is our referee. Quick gift, sadly, without England under 18 international Sean Kerr. Of course, had a bit of a partnership with Ben Redshaw in that South Africa tour. Clear release! Push! Quick gift, carrying it up hard through the middle. Run roll! Six. Yes. Six. <laughs> Penalty wick gift. They'll go to the corner. A real physical feeling to the early exchanges in this one. to the back line, running on a hard line. Go, on, roll. Go Wickiff, huge counter ruck from Sedba. But no. I think the heavy contact there through the tackle means we're just gonna have a bit of a wait just to make sure everyone's all right. And in case you missed me chatting through it earlier, just to look at the team sheets here for both sides, Sedba School led by Ben Redshaw in the centres, alongside him. This is his good mate, a long time centre partner, Jack Randall. Half backs, Will Wooden, and Alex Martin. Will Wooden, one of the vice captains here, and another England international. And the back three, Wilbur Blackham, Luke Parry, and Tom Burton at full back. Up front, Johnny Hansen, Archie Ivans and Kater Ando. Second row, Tommy Triggs and Finn Baker, the vice captain. And another one of that quartet of England under 18 internationals in the uh, Sebra ranks. Back row, Harry Gresswell, Ollie Glover and Kane James. Kane James, as you can see there, wearing 21. On the bench, Tom Roebuck, Jacob Buttrell, Charlie Turnbull, Josh Marlowe and Josh Harbour, and of course, all led by the simply outstanding Simon Mulholland Noxie. As he is so well known up and down the country. The great schoolboy coaches. Whitgift, meanwhile, led in the second row by Jocelyn Heaver. You may remember his brother, Bertie Heaver, wrote, uh, wrote an article for us on Next Gen 15 a few years back. And joining Heaver in the second row, Samuel Gower-Smith. The front row, we've got Jamie Miller, Ben Abraham and Sebastian Rubio Prida. Back row, Will Von Daddleston, Max Hammond and Noah Berger. We've already seen in the early exchanges, Noah Berger is going to be uh, 
playing big, I think is the uh, is the colloquial phrase. Halfbacks, Matthew Roberts and Ethan Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is the vice captain today. In the centres, Labib Iqbal and Connor Budd. And in the back three, Luca Holland, Cass Harris and Ben Townrow. Bench, Harry Flint, Gabriel Akamia, Fraser Murray, Sam Line and Tyler Stewart Pasley. And Whitgift are led by Chris Wilkins, who also doubles up as the uh, head coach over at Isha Rugby Club. He's a busy man, is Chris Wilkins, and an excellent player back in his day as well. A lengthy delay here for the injury. Never a pleasant sight to see a player have to leave the field on a stretcher like that. And we can just hope that everything proves okay for him. Really tricky one for the players to bounce back from. And there. Thumbs off, still, because I didn't move very high back. Player moves his weight, whereas carried in field. Players will just wait as uh, one of the touch judges is actually carrying the stretcher. So I'll just run through those fixtures for you that come after half term. Round four, Saturday the 18th of November, Millfield hosting Whitgift at Millfield. Round five, 23rd of November, up at Broad Street, RFC, the traditional home of this fixture, Wellington College against Sedford been the ultimate fixture on the school's calendar in the last three or four years some absolutely stunning games of rugby and then the final round date to be confirmed but Millfield hosting Sedba that'll be an absolute cracker those two love to finish the season against each other <laughs> and so there are somewhat sombre few minutes we restart the game with a wicket penalty and they pump it into the corner and they'll have a chance to drive and a shot at the opening score of the game really good kick there from the wicket fly half Ethan Fitzgerald our best wishes of course extend to the wicket injured player hopefully he's okay but attention now turns to the field and it's overthrown by Whitgift. So Sedba have a chance to break free and break free they do. A big charging run from the hooker Archie Ivans up to the halfway line. Sedba looking to get on the attack. Redshaw gets it through his hands. Out wide to Jack Randall. Randall feeds it out to the left wing, Wilbur Blackham. Sedba hitting accelerate. Crashing through they go. Kane James takes that one into contact. Wooten switches things across to the other side. Out again to Blackburn on that far side. Blackham, rather. Wooten feeds to Johnny Hansen. The volume has hit Max here. That charge from Ivans has sparked the Sedba crowd, but Whitgift have the penalty. And I don't know if you can hear the bagpipes picking up in the background as well. Highland Cathedral. Blaring through the atmosphere here at Sedba. Having been dampened by that injury has come alive after that Archie Ivans break. But it's Whitgift that have the attacking position. We see here the replay. Great work over the ball from Jamie Miller, the loose head for Whitgift. I put them on theirs. You say you're in distance. Whitgift line out on the 22. What are we doing? Are you in our out, pal? Get in there, please. You don't need to wait for the hooker. Sedba, poach the line out. Spilled at the back, though. 
by James. Be a scrum down, wicked fall. Line out went right. Said but couldn't quite claim it cleanly. Eight head in. Crouch. Bind. Set. Quick gift. Ball to the tail of the scrum, nice and quick. Fitzgerald now feeds it wide towards Ben Townrow. Townrow takes it in. Oh, it's wrapped up by three Sedford defenders. Really committed defence there from the men in brown. And a huge tackle from Kane James. Comes in. And that allowed Ben Redshaw the chance to get over the ball. And it's a penalty, Sedford. I had a chat with some of the coaching staff yesterday who were telling me that Sedba build from their defence. Humble enough as a coaching group to say that as much as anything, it's about pride in the badge for these boys, and you saw it there. First in the tackle from James, and then in the work on the deck from Ben Redshaw, the skipper setting the early example for his side. So the air. Get the ball in. Ball goes to deck, but Wooden still manages to feed his back line. To the hands of Redshaw, he moves it fast to Blackman on the left wing. And Blackman is away, and Redshaw is going to be away for the opening score of the rugby of the school's championship. Ben Redshaw. Randall put it out the back to Redshaw. Redshaw fed Blackman. Blackman with the gas and the subtle pass back inside for Redshaw. The Sedba skipper scoring the school's championship opening try, the opening try in this game. And handing the lead to his side here against Whitgift. And Redshaw converts his own try, the captain. With all the points so far and 10 minutes in, Sedba have a 7-0 lead with a thrilling score. Make sure they're behind, please, 10. Make sure they're on side. It really was a glorious, glorious try. Said, but I've lit this game up. The hands white! Wooten out to James. James lines up the contact, but it's a strong tackle from Sebastian Rubio Prida. And that strong tackling has helped earn his side a penalty. And they go quickly, do they, through Matthew Roberts? No, the referee wants this to call them back. Not that side. And Whitgift will go for the post here. Captain. Through Ethan Fitzgerald. Six rooms at me again for a penalty. I'll reverse it. And it makes sense early on in this game. Points. Pragmatic way to go. And points are exactly what they have. Fitzgerald 
making easy work of that penalty narrows the gap to seven points to three. Another behind, please turn. Sedba launched the kick off high. Claimed well by Wickham, though, but claimed well and bundled into touch, are they? No, taken out in the air. We'll have a penalty. What's that? The crowd here, by the way, absolutely massive. Sadly, from your perspective as viewers, they're all on our side of the uh, of the touchline. But let me tell you, they are three or four deep the whole length of the touchline. Sure it's up and again. And in boisterous mood. So Whitgift nudged it up to about the halfway line. Dead on the halfway line, in fact. Line out goes long though claimed over the top by Keita Ando. Time for Wooten. Oh, Redshaw. Huge pass out to the right wing from Redshaw. Luke Parry takes it into contact. Ends up in touch. We'll have a Whitgift line out. to throw in short line out just four players to go to the tail but it's stolen by Finn Baker the set for second row and Wooten does gloriously well flips the ball up between his legs and now Glover gets on the charge we said he loves a carry and there he goes bullocking through the young open side but met in fantastic fashion by his opposite number, Max Hammond. Glover bursting through the Whitgift defence. And I apologise, it wasn't Hammond, it was the skip, it was Samuel Goa smith that claimed the ball. Turning it over superbly. Guys, numbers nice and early, please. Although I actually think, having seen the uh, referee yes. have a word, I think Sebra swapped their four and five shirts. I think Gower Smith may be wearing four. I think it might be Jocelyn Heaver that's actually wearing five. We made that Personal turnover. See, see if I can get confirmation of that one for you. Game moves on. You're going backwards. Well, sadly, I think it may end up Max Hammond got the early knock. Fine. In the way this scrum is packing down with Fraser Murray on Set. on the open side flank, so we do wish wish Max Hammond all, twist. all the best on the field. Said but have the ball in hand and Redshaw. And Martin getting intricate between the pair of them. And going straight towards the line is Tom Burton. The intricacy between the fly half and the inside centre, and then the gas from the fullback to give Sedba their second try of the game. And an ash flash at the far end of the field to top it all off. Tom Burton with the finish. Capable of absolute magic is the young fullback. Speed to burn as he accelerated away from the Whitgift defence. 
And then the big ash splash to finish in the corner. Burton, who of course we got a few glimpses of, didn't we, at the Sedba Tens at the back end of last season. Showing us what he's capable of. Redshaw's conversion just drifts wide. But his side of a healthy 12-0 lead. We see here again, it's the intricacy between Redshaw and Martin. And then the pass from Martin to Burton, who just has that lovely delay on the pass that turns it into a dummy as he sees the defender's shoulders turn. And from there, it's pure gas. Lovely little double double pump on that pass to turn it into a dummy. Off a foot. Good advance. Oh, it's a scrappy kickoff. Receipt, but then it ends up being spilled by Whitgift, so several have a scrum centre field on their own 22. I don't think he'd do it again if he tried. Eight heads in, please. Crouch! Bind! Set! Scrum, Kane James, tail of it. Said, but really 12. Starting to enjoy themselves out there, looking to play from deep to the hands of Glover. A hard carrying open right. side flanker. Outside. Now they put boot to ball. Goes deep towards Ben Townray. Townray. <laughs> Beats Iqbal, Iqbal makes good ground. Eva. Leave it up, Brown! Takes it into contact. Brook had formed. It'll be a penalty wick Man, gift. Five, it's a high penalty count in this game moment. do with this one go for the sticks again continuing with their policy of just building a score staying in touching distance Zebra have scored two glorious tries but if managed to bang this one over still only be six points behind given the absolute electricity that's fizzing through Zebra at the moment I don't think they'll be too disappointed with that. Oh. Just smacks off the upright. So the score stays at 12-3. Cracking effort from Fitzgerald. Long range. Said for 22. Wooten. Looks like he'll be the man to take it. Oh, he's got to take it now. Nope, in fact, Wooden decides best leave it to Alec Martin, the fly half. Goes deep to his opposite man, Fitzgerald. And now it's the Whitgift back row and second row is working together. Fight option, come on. Boss forward. It's a little bit of a bitty period in the game, this, isn't it? Lots of penalties, lots of scrums. But well played. It's a Millfield skipper, Ian Davis, Brooch. walks along behind us. A good outing Aye. from him on the wrong side of the scoreboard, but on a personal yes. level. Good performance against Clifton College. Earlier on today, here on the field, 
Whitgift getting intricate in midfield, but a thumping tackle from Redshaw forces the ball loose, and Seba will look to counter-attack. Gresswell, the blindside flanker, is on a charge down the left-hand side of the field here. Now Wooden to Randall. Gresswell again. Met this time with force. By Jamie Miller, the wicket loose head. Tackle's release! Gresswell does eventually make ground. Redshaw now out to Burton. Burton through the hands, out to Luke Parry. Parry's ball back inside, though, is intercepted by Whitgift, who are then bundled into touch. Tom Roebuck, the Sebra replacement, with the big tackle on Hebert. Sound of bagpipes rings around the field here. Searching around to identify where they are. I can't quite spot them, but you can certainly hear them. Oh. Reliably informed, he's behind the Whitgift's posts, posts rather, and there he is. I've just spotted him. As Whitgift get turned over by Redshaw, do they know? Have a scrum down, Wickiff ball. <laughs> it's a funny place, said the school, an almost mythical quality about it. Only added to you by the sound of the bagpipes in the hey. background. They do things differently here. Yeah. And it creates an atmosphere of real intensity for those playing against them. And one of real passion for those in those brown shirts. Speak to any of them and that's what they'll tell you. It's the main feeling when they run out in this field, passion and pride. We see it in their defence, but I'll tell you what we see in their attack is just pure joy. Whitgift, get the ball to the tail of the scrum. Fitzgerald gets himself across halfway. Crash ball 10, innovative. Gift wide now. Out to Luca Holland. He's well tackled by his opposite man, Luke Parry. And it's turned over in the end by Said, but great work at that breakdown. Slow ball. The Wooden was forced to go in and help clear that ruck out, I think. And now they're out on the left hand side. Blackman making some ground. Wooden has to tidy up though. Loose offload. Now Redshaw is fighting and scrambling for every inch on the field at the moment. Baker takes it in, looks for the offload, but it wasn't quite there, so he holds on to it. Good decision making there from the international second row. Redshaw now spots half a gap, gets the offload away. Redshaw and Roebuck exchanging passes there. As Wooden pings the kick in behind, the referee blows his whistle just while we assess another little knock. Fortunately, this one considerably less serious than that which we've already seen. So I would imagine we will be restarting with a Sebba scrum. So everything's worked out. Will Wooden having to go off for a little rest. That's a shame for Seb, but the international scrum half. Looking as though he's got a dead leg or something, just a little half limp that he's got going on. 
So they're going to have to make a change at scrum half. And it looks as though it's going to be Josh Harbert taking over GTs at scrum half. First job is to get to the correct side of the scrum. He started off. He's so he's going to put it in on Whitgift's side. Got himself back across to the brown side of the scrum, though. So more familiar territory now. Said, but this is where we see them at their flowing best. Ball in the wide spaces, out in front of the runners. Glorious to watch. Redshaw takes a heavy tackle there from Fraser Murray. Baker now takes it in. Let's have a look the other way. Kane James. Another big carry gets the offload away to Redshaw. James is having a big game so far. Noah Berger break off the base of the scrum. Move Nick Bow now takes it in. Seb the defence is up fast on him, but Iqbal does really well to make a bit of ground and evade the first couple of tacklers. Fitzgerald getting the ball through his hands brilliantly. Connor Budd almost getting a superb offload away. It's going to be a penalty, said, but diving over the top. Name Jack Randall. Not the over enthusiastic to try and affect the turnover there. Fitzgerald. Oh. From that angle, a brilliant kick almost up to the 22. Really tight angle. of chatter around the touchline as we wait for this line out to come in. Now it does, and Whitgift go off the top. It's Gerald through the hands to Noah Berger. It's Gerald is getting the ball through his hands. Get the sense if he can get the ball in his hands often enough. That might be where Whitgift get the joy is in Fitzgerald just picking off gaps for his runners to go into. on at the base of the ruck there from Roberts is going to end that weak gift attack and said but we'll have a scrum down by the unlucky in that it looked very much like it went backwards but Bree was considerably closer than me oh. But getting intricate through red short to Randall, but the pass just drifted forward. Not quite the same zip on that attack for Sedba, so the running line's just a little over eager.
shame that one because Randall hit a good line was making decent ground. Randall's actually going to go off and have a bit of a breather. It's a little bit of a rejig in the Seba back line by the look of things. Looks as though Blackman has come across playing the centres. Luke Parry has switched from the right wing to the left wing. New man on the right wing, his name I will give to you just as soon as I see his shirt. It's Gerald. Lines. I'm afraid I won't be bringing you his name because he's wearing the shirt number 23 and there is no 23 on our team sheet. David! A slight error apparently from the kit suppliers. Some of the kits don't quite fit as they should have, so players have had to wear slightly different shirt numbers. As we go through to half time, Sedba. Leading Whitgift 12 points to three. Two sensational Sebba tries. A solitary Whitgift penalty in response. A game that saw a bit of a halt for a long injury and we're wishing Max Hammond all the best. But on the rugby side of things, it has been sensational at times from Sedba. Whitgift has done brilliantly well just to hang into the contest because there was a moment where Sedba looks as though they were prepared to run riot. See the opening score here. Blackman charging down the left-hand side, back in to Ben Redshaw for what was the first ever try in the school's championship and what a way to score it it was as well. Randall to Redshaw, Redshaw to Blackman. Great pace from the left wing. And then back in for Redshaw to run in unopposed and how fitting that it's the skipper that gets the opening try. See that. Set the staff. A bit of a chat there with the backs. Forwards in conversation in a different huddle. And let me tell you, knowing those Sebba coaches, as I do, the message will be that of sheer positivity as we look at the second score here. Lovely little dummy that from Tom Burton. And do you think he enjoyed it? Oh, yes, he did. this intricate play in midfield between Martin and Redshaw. Martin eventually releasing Burton and Burton with that lovely late dummy. And just look at that. Right in front of the headmaster. <laughs> Whitgift well, they've got to just dig in and try and hang in there. They look really good when the ball gets through the hands of Ethan Fitzgerald at fly half. The key for them is probably to try and keep Sebra on the back foot. Don't let them get that front foot ball that they can then get fizzing out to that electric back line. The tighter they can keep the plate. Or they're going to be able to stay in this game and grit it out. But you have to say that's exactly what they've done so far, is grit it out really nicely. Two stunning tries from Sebra, really the, the key difference. But Wickets have done brilliantly well just to, to sort of try and close the game down as much as they can. But they do need to convert some of that field position and play into points 12-3 down at half time referee eager to get going but with Dean kick off I think he wants to get to his lunch quite soon I think that might be why he's rushing them through here first game of the new 
Schools Rugby Tournament, the Schools Championship. Four teams, Millfield, Sedba, Wellington College and Wicket. Playing across six rounds of games through the season. Already we've heard today the news story that Clifton College planned to join for 2023. And I'm sure there will be many, many more looking to join them as well. Every single game live streamed here on Next Gen 15. Your media partners to the school's championship. And what a pleasure it is going to be to cover every single second of this tournament. It's been a funny old start. This game, of course, being broadcast to you slightly later than planned as a result of events of the recent days. We are up and running in the school's championship. Games are going to come thick and fast. Said Bert, poach the line out. Moving it through the hands. Redshaw now out to Blackman. He's moved from the wing to outside centre now. Kane James getting plenty of time on the ball. The number eight for Said Bert, wearing 21. Loaded said, but trying really hard to get plenty of touches on the ball here in the early exchanges. Now they go charging through the middle of the ruck. Will Glover, we've seen him carrying like an absolute train through this game, and he's started the second half just how he played the first half. Ball spilled though on the inside, but Burton, an unlucky one that one as well. Burton could have made that one stick. He was making ground. Scrum wick gift. To the tail, Noah Berger. We've seen him carry off base a couple of times and made good ground, and he does so again here. Fitzgerald now trying to just find a bit of space. So it goes back to where the scrum's just been, but the ball spilled. We'll be coming back for another one, I think. We are indeed. And again, much like in the first half, some scrappy play at times, difficult to find the space. We've seen what can happen when that space is found. Those two long range efforts from Sedba showing us what's possible. Been a fair bit of scrappy play along the way as well. go now Martin to Redshaw this time same move that they tried to feed Randall with earlier they tried to feed Blackman with again same move same result ball just drifts forward just a little bit of early season rustiness from said but in terms of the depth on those running lines they set piece move, same move, same result. Either side of half time. The sun has uh, dropped behind a cloud, and we're now facing temperatures slightly more familiar to Buscombe One. Quick gift, get it away down the left hand side. Oh, it's brilliantly covered in the end because. Wicked threw away through Luca Holland on that left touch line. Sedba have turned the ball over. Have they? No, not quite. No, possibly they have. Neither side quite sure who's got it. Referee in the end decides that there's been a knock on and he'll give a Sedba scrum.
Incredible number of dogs on the touchline here at Sebba. That sort of a location, I suppose. Plenty of Spaniels. Spaniels and Labradors, that's what we're seeing all around here. No surprise at all. Exactly the sort of dogs you'd associate with Sebba School. Another little delay in play. I wonder if there's an injury or if it's just that players are getting a bit thirsty. Either way, the referee is quite keen that they all get a move on. He still stood where the scrum is. Blowing his whistle, trying to get everyone to uh, get themselves where they need to be. Uh, it's for Johnny, if he wants to wipe the ball. Well, looks like we've got 16 players all gathered together. One referee, two scrum halves and a ball. We should be in good shape. Off we go. Oh, Josh Harbert still thinks it's the first half. Managed to get himself around to the right side this time. Said, but inject pace, retro out to Burton. Burton, where he's already scored from a similar position. This time he's tackled and feeds Luke Parry. Parry, oh, brilliantly keeps the ball alive. Blackman now to Redshaw, Redshaw back inside. I think to Jacob Buttrell, who's come on. Whitgift eventually bundles Sebra into touch, but that is the electricity that Sebra can bring when they get themselves on the front foot. That crisp passing through the hands and then the ambition to get the ball off the offload, off the floor. Sets the field alive. And now Whitgift under pressure to escape the nose of their own try line. Ball knocked on at the line out. So it'll be a scrum down, Sedber and a wonderful attacking opportunity to add to their 12-3 lead. But look out behind me for the second team pitch. Where there are three lads, no older than eight or nine, chucking a rugby ball around. Eddie Jones, are you watching? just wanting everyone to be stable ahead of this scrum. James goes off the base and James gets across the try line. Kane James. He's been brilliant all game. Carrying like a bulldog. And now he has a try as a reward for his efforts. He went blind, got around the blindside flanker. And try as Sam Line might, there was no way that Kane James was being stopped from that distance. Said Bascool. Have a third try of the game through their number eight, Kane James. Positively, Sam Simmons like off the base of that scrum. Showing great speed and power. 
as Redshaw's conversion just clatters off the upright. I think that's the third kick we've seen today that's hit the post. These said, are they wider than normal posts? Who knows what's going on? Probably just a coincidence. But hey, what's life without a good conspiracy theory? It's a huge towering kickoff from Whitgift, and it comes back on the Whitgift side. Or at least it had done before Sebba managed to smother it on the deck, but it had already been knocked on, so it would be a Whitgift scrum. Brilliant leap from Connor Budd to get up and compete for that ball. Absolutely fantastic. Get the penalty from the scrum, punch it into the corner. So you can hear the chance reverberating around the field here at Sebba. Absolute hive of activity on the touchlines. And Whitgift seal the first score of the game. Well, no, the line-out's not straight. So we will have a set for scrum. Game taking on a sort of strange pattern. It's working sort of set piece to set piece at the moment. That much continuity, but then these moments of sheer brilliance from Sedba. dotted in between various bits of set piece play. Kane James though will be quite happy about that. Oh. One such set piece was what allowed him to score Sebba's third oh. try of the game. Set. He's packing down at number eight again for this scrum. This reset. time Josh Harbert decides to have a little run and why not gets it out wide. Outside. What I assume is Josh Marlowe. Seppa go for the ambitious crossfield kick, but why not? Works fantastically well into the hands of Luke Parry. Brilliant ambition from Seppa, the crossfield kick inside their own 22. And it just again injects that bit of electricity into the play. Blackman takes it into contact. Buttrell getting the pass out now towards Martin. Martin is well tackled but has support. Seba having to work really hard to get this ball back, but they do eventually do so. Baker takes it in. Slightly cleaner ball this time. And now Martin decides this isn't going anywhere and thumps the ball downfield. Fitzgerald will field it for Whitgift and has a bit of a counter-attacking opportunity. He looks as though he's going to take it, has a little work around the outside, gets the ball to Ben Townrow. Townrow takes it into contact now, but Whitgift are deep into Seba territory now. Into the hands of Gabriel Akamir. Fitzgerald working it through fast. Rubio Prida takes it in. Fitzgerald, oh, lovely handling. Iqbal with the dummy, makes a bit of ground. Best passage of the game so far for Whitgift. Matthew Roberts now feeds Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, his pass just skips off the chest 
of his skipper Heaver. So Burton boosts the ball deep. And from a wicket's perspective, wicket perspective rather, they will be very pleased to see that one skip out into touch because there was nobody home. And we'll settle down for that excitement with a Whitgift line out just inside their own half. But that was definitely Whitgift's best passage of play in the game. They'll be disappointed not to have been able to turn it into something. But it should give them great confidence that when they play with that sort of attacking vigour, they can cause some problems. Gerald. Strong carry from Fitzgerald. Rather a strong carry from Berger having been fed by Fitzgerald. Parry sweeping down. Back inside to Tom Burton. Two tries for Burton. It was Parry with the initial break down the left hand side. Fed once again by a fizzing pass to that far, to that near touchline. And then the ball back into Burton and Burton from there is not going to make any kind of a mistake. He is electric and we see here Parry. It was a good cover tackle, but he got the offload away and Burton turns on the gas. Four tries for Sedba. And a simple conversion as well. Tom Burton there. Two tries to his name. Helping his side to a 24 points to three lead against Whitgift. We've still got another 18 or 19 minutes left to play. What's that? Fizzing pass out to this near touchline. Harry. He can just pop it back inside to his mate Tom Burton. So Whitgift moving into the sort of territory where they have to score. Whenever they get these opportunities now. Fitzgerald takes it in. Kane James, I thought it just nicked that, but the referee not happy with the roll from the tackler. Scrum Wick gift. You sense they need something off this. A big blind side to work with. Mike Berger have a dabble. Chooses not to. They go open. Iqbal has the ball in his hands. Big dummy cuts back inside, but he's met by Glover. Ripped away, is it? No, it's not. Referee. So said we were off their feet. Whitgift called the scrum from the penalty. Obviously feeling that they're in the ascendancy. That set piece. base this time Berger does decide to pick up beats the wicket back line town rope takes it into contact 
big counter up from Sebba, so they have to tidy it up quickly to Whitgift. They managed to do so. Turn line, doing the tidying up work. Now Fitzgerald, bit of space. Iqbal now has the ball on the charge. There he goes, and Iqbal gets across the line. Whitgift are going nowhere in this game. Refuse to give up. And it's Labib Iqbal that crosses the line for them. It was lovely, intricate handling involving props and backs. Rubio Prido was the man that fed Iqbal and then Iqbal so strong through contact, bouncing off would-be tacklers and across the line for his, first, his side's first try of the game. Fitzgerald gets the extras, 24-10 behind a wick gift. But with 15 minutes to go, maybe just slightly less. This game is not dead and buried yet. Secure the kickoff. What can they do from it? And push. As that try inspired them, Iqbal, the try scorer, gets the ball away. Oh, brilliant from Townrow as well. And now they do get it down this left hand side. Luca Holland with the grubber through. Collected brilliantly by Burton. Audacious from the Sebra fullback. And now Sebra are going to look to counter. Parry carving in field. Parry just manages to get his knees on the floor and turn that into a tackle. Wooden has re-entered the field. And Burton, could he be away for his hat-trick? Burton weaving this way and out. Burton pins his ear back, going for the corner. Townrose chasing him down, but Burton is going to complete a sensational hat-trick here in the opening game of the school's championship. Tom Burton is the said for hero, the hat-trick man. And a wonderful, wonderful finish for Tom Burton. Stunning rugby, just as Whitgift had looked as though they might still be in this game. Sedba respond with a glorious, glorious try from Tom Burton, the mercurial fullback. Magnificent. Well, we said he was a bit special. But he has more than added to that reputation here today. Redshaw's conversion doesn't quite make it. But the try was just glorious. The inside ball from Wooten, the George Gregan pass, as I like to call it. And Burton weaved this way and that. Townrow did his best to chase him down, but in the end, the fend and the pace were just too much. Tom Burton has the hat trick, and Whitgift have some work to do in the next 12 minutes. If they want to get themselves a victory to begin the school's championship. Said, but I think. Fancy another score. They are looking to play from deep here by the men in brown. Gresswell takes it into contact. Oh, he's so strong through contact as Gresswell. Wooten to Redshaw. Redshaw sees space through the middle, so he just hoops the ball down there. And Parry, Luke Parry is here to put real pressure on Fitzgerald. Parry 
Oh, Fitzgerald does really well there, but Redshaw then makes the tackle. Heavers had to come back and help out. Iqbal now in possession. Sedba hounding around him, but Iqbal does really well just to get himself a bit of space. Sam Lyon now takes it in. Berger gets it away, gets a good offload through as well. But we're going to come back. Sebra offside. offside. Yes, but Levin was offside down here. Levin. The energy injected after that score, and Sebra perhaps just a bit too energetic off the line there, jumping off early. So Fitzgerald with a chance to find a good touch. 19 points behind her, his side. So he goes for broke, doesn't quite make it. Parry tidies up, now Wooten in the backfield. Wooten, that one comes off the side of the boot slightly. And so we end up just about where Whitgift would have wanted to be before all of that. Line out safely brought down. Harry Flint has it there. Now said, but steal it away from them all, and Redshaw pushes the ball wide into the hands of Burton again. Burton so elusive when he gets going. And now playing with advantage for the high tackle. Fitzgerald and Parry in a foot race to collect Wooten's chip over the top. Fitzgerald gets there first. Oh, it's great footwork from Fitzgerald. He's been a shining light for Whitgift today as the fly half. Gives it to a skipper, Heaver, now into the hands of Prida. But eventually bundled into touch by Sedba. And Burton there. Once again, just showing the electricity that he can bring to the field. But Whitgift, did they look to look as they look to break out? Uh, just couldn't quite get there. You see here, Burton. Blue, glorious running, place. glorious feet from him. Such a threat. Just look at the dancing feet here of Ethan Fitzgerald, the Whitgift vice captain. Looking like a young George Ford back there. Stand back on. Finn Baker brings that one down safely for Sedba, and now they fall the ball. Inching forward. That's what's nine. Three calls once. Now several look to play Wooten. Moves it through Blackman to Redshaw. Redshaw to Parry. Parry has space, but the pass doesn't go to hand. A real shame that one from a Seba perspective. Because Parry had acres of space. I think we've seen Josh Harbour move into fly half for said, but with the return of Will Wooten, Alec Martin, being a rest on the bench, I think. Gives <laughs> line out, slap back. So Iqbal tidies up in the centres, and Iqbal makes great ground. Oh, what a second half he's had as the young inside center. Town right, takes it into contact. Huge counter ruck from Sedba. And it's turned the ball over for them. Finn Baker 
goes the direct route and goes the direct route nicely. Gets the offload away down the right hand side. And it's going to be a sixth try for Sedba. Finn Baker with the offload. Scored by the replacement on the right wing. I want to say he's Josh Marlowe. He could be Josh Harbour. That shirt issue, I'm afraid, means I can't quite tell you exactly. But it was a glorious finish nonetheless. A little hitch kick to break free from the tackle. And Sedba have six tries. And an authoritative performance with which to start the season and with which to start this brand new competition, the school's championship. First game of the tournament, Sedba. And we're sitting pretty at the top of the table. Worth noting as well, by the way, that bonus points are in operation in the school's championship. So Sedba have collected a try scoring bonus point. So there is a little bit to play for here for Whitgift because they could get a losing, losing bonus point if they can get within seven, although given the time constraints now, that would be a pretty sensational result. But Sedba School, we're going to come away from this one with maximum points, the men in brown. Off to an absolute flyer, and there's plenty left to go yet. Could be more. Great kickoff from Fitzgerald. Play on. I've said it before, but he really has been a shining light for his side. And they've regathered the kickoff. Heaver. A little offload. For Fraser Murray. Hands now off Fitzgerald. This is a play they've run a few times. Fitzgerald onto one of the props. Jamie Miller it was that took the first one. E. Roberts having a little dart around the outside. Fitzgerald looking to find those big runners, but the huge shot coming in from Harry Gresswell, the set for blindside flanker, who's had one of those quietly effective games that so many blindside flankers do. Two huge carries, a couple of huge tackles, and an absolute mountain of work from the young blind side. And said, but with this scrum have stacked Crouch. the far side of the field. And Luke Parry here Bye. on the near touch line is sort of, I think he's trying to blend in with Set. the crowd. So perhaps the trick play here sees them feed Parry. Whitgift are wise to that one though, so Wood Wooden goes to the open side and Sedba goes siding through here. Oh, siding through. Is it going to be a seventh try? It is a seventh try. It's Josh with a seventh try of the game for Sedba. Oh, they're finishing with style here on Buscombe. Glorious rugby from Sedba. There were signs of that electricity scattered throughout the early parts of the game, but in the last 10 minutes or so, it has all come together. They are showing us exactly what they're made of. A major statement to open the school's championship. I dare say they'll fancy more. Certainly moving the ball quickly. I think now what I can say is that both Josh Marlow and Josh Harbour have scored. Martin is back on the field as well. Oh, champagne rugby from Sebbe. Oh, the referee's called it for a forward pass. He was probably right. But it was superb to watch. Back and forth from Sedba. The drums beating, the bagpipes playing. These boys are enjoying themselves out there now. A 
Kane James has a rest. Jacob Butterell moves to number eight. Nine. Set. Whitgift have a scrum. 41-10 down they are now. Seems like only moments ago we were talking about them potentially rolls. coming back into this one. Clinical from Sedba. Connor Bud makes good ground. Now heave it. Advantage. Advantage oh, an advantage Sedba. But they may not need it because they are going to take advantage, are they? Yes, they are. Another score for Sedba. Another long range effort down the right hand side. Eight tries. Three in just about three minutes. Six. That's going to be it for today. The conversion will be the last play of the game. And what a way to finish. Yet another long range effort from Sedba. An absolutely stunning performance with which to open the school's championship. Eight tries. A hat trick for Tom Burton. And a simply magnificent occasion here at Sebba School on one of the most storied pitches in the world of schools rugby. Martin's conversion is wide, but it matters not because it's a victory for his team. 46 points to 10 against Whitgift. A simply stunningly clinical final 10 minutes or so of the game from Sedba. At one point, with about 15 minutes left to go, we were talking about a comeback from Whitgift. But in the end, the quality, the know-how, and the unashamed ambition to go from deep from this group of young players at Sedba School saw them refuse to be cowed by the pressure of a potential comeback and turned it into the most sensational of victories, 46 points to 10. Sedba top the school's championship table after round one. They've got a bit of a break now before their next one. When they take on Wellington College in November. It's a long time, in fact, for Sedba. Whitgift will be back soon, though. We're live with them next weekend when they take on Wellington College. So a quick, early chance for them to get back on the horse. But I'll tell you what, this said beside are going to take some stopping. A sensational performance. And a word too to the earlier game. Do go and check that one out on the other link where Clifton College put in a sensational performance against Millfield School. Clifton, of course, in the process of that, announcing that they will in 2023 be looking to join the school's championship, this ever-growing competition right in its infancy. But in the main event, the school's championship opener, it was said, but that lit the place up. And it was that man that you can see just leaning out from the tunnel there, Tom Burton, stepping out into the middle of the tunnel, who was the leading light, a hat trick for the fullback. A glorious performance, said the school. We'll be talking about this one for a long, long time. They may not be back in school's championship action until November, but they are gonna have eyes firmly set on that game at Broad Street RFC on the 23rd of November. Of course, plenty of fixtures between now and then. They've got their usual calendar of fixtures to get through. It's the players that clap through the tunnel. This is what it's all about. And a word to On Max Hammond, the injured Whitgift player. 
we hope he's okay. We hear a trip to hospital, but there are hopes that it's nothing too serious. So we send him all of our very best wishes. Thoughts definitely with him. But in a rugby sense, thoughts turn to next weekend, I suppose, as well. Whitgift versus Wellington College. We've had our first taste of the school's championship. I don't think we can wait for any more, can we? It's going to be absolutely fantastic. 2.30 kickoff at Whitgift School on Saturday. I do hope you join us. From a next-gen 15 perspective, we've got games for you on Friday night, Ipswich against Northampton School for Boys, and on Saturday morning when Reading Bluecoat are in action at home on a 10 o'clock kickoff. From there, we'll be hot-footing it to Whitgift to bring you round two of the school's championship, Whitgift versus Wellington College. But here in the opener, it was all about one team, said the school, and a quite sensational flourish at the end for a 46 points to 10 victory against Whitgift. Seba School set the tone in the school's championship and we can't wait for more. So you join us after what's been an absolutely fantastic day of rugby here at Seba School. Obviously an unusual circumstance to have to have launched the, the school's championship within, but a fantastic game of rugby. Seba School with an absolutely glorious performance and we saw in the in the feature game beforehand Clifton College showing us exactly why they're looking to join this project in the coming years. Now alongside me is the headmaster of Seba School, Dan Harrison, and of course a former head of rugby here as well. So very much a man that knows what he's talking about. Did you enjoy that first of all? I enjoyed both matches. Um, I thought Clifton were very strong in the first match. Uh, and I thought we were slow to get going in the second match, but finished some tries well wide out in the second one. But uh, two excellent games of rugby. They certainly were. Now, on the wider schools championship, I mean, it's it's a it's a project that's got rugby values at its heart, and we and we want to see as many schools in the long run entering this as possible. But from a school perspective, from your perspective, tell us a bit about your thoughts on it. Yeah, I'm really keen that this is open for all schools to come and try to play against the best in the country. Part of uh, rugby is, is losing and getting used to failure and trying um, yourself against the best in the country. And that's what we've seen today. And two teams have lost today and two teams will learn from that. Um, very much close to our hearts are the, are the true rugby values with the pupils getting it right when they win and when they lose, with the parents getting it right, with the coaches getting it right. Um, we've absolutely seen that today with two fantastic matches and it's gone really well. And I think you're absolutely right on the the sort of values of the game aspect of things. I thought last night there was a, for those that don't know, there was a dinner before the game. Uh, all the players and coaching staff came and sat down to to eat here at Seb. But, but what impressed me most of all, every table, all the boys were sitting with their respective players from their positions from all the other schools, which just, that's the real spirit of this project, I think. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, they will make friends. Uh, and as, as long as after the game they go and talk, they shake hands, um, you know, they will, they will play against each other in their two years again. And that's, that's what rugby's all about. It's about on the pitch, but as well as off the pitch as well. So, so important. Absolutely. And of course, I suppose the point that we all want to make is that this is, a, this is an open competition. It may just be that at the moment there are four, four schools, although as we've heard from Clifton today, they're very eager to be part of things in 2023. I think they pretty much got the ink dry on that one. But it is open to open to all. We want to see as many schools keen, as keen as possible to push each other because we want to see schools wanting to compete and, as you say, being willing to lose. Absolutely, and willing to travel as well. And that's not always easy with increasing energy, energy costs and all of that and school budgets. But for me, it's really, really important that you try against the best in the country. If you if you think that you've got a good side, you know, come and try and then learn from it. Um, open is the only way forward for me. Absolutely. And just a final thought, what a glorious place to have, to have opened things up. I know you're telling me that it's always sunny here in Sedbert, but I know that's not true. What a wonderful, wonderful way to kick things off. Absolutely. We... Um, we, we do get all sorts of weather here. We've had a beautiful day today. Um, we're very fortunate where we are and with our surroundings, uh, and it's been a wonderful Sunday. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolutely wonderful day. I've been so well looked after by everyone. Everyone here has. It's been brilliant, and we can't wait for the weeks to come. Join us next week for Whitgift versus Wellington.